I built an entire cruise ship in The Sims 4. I spent like a week straight working on it. It is the biggest build I have ever done and it's got literally everything inside of it. This thing is a hotel, it's a bar, it's got a movie theater, it's got a bowling alley, there's a pool and a kid's space and a cafe and a restaurant. I mean, it literally has everything inside of it. We obviously have a lot to talk about here, so I'm just gonna jump straight into the build. I know you're gonna have a lot of questions, so first of all, why? a cruise ship? Like, what's the inspiration here behind this? There's two answers to that question, and deep down, they're both just The Sims 3. As many of you know, I am a Sims 3 stan. It was my first ever Sims game. I was obsessed with The Sims 3. I still am obsessed with The Sims 3. And in The Sims 3, there was this pack called Island Paradise, and in it, you could live on a houseboat, and you could also buy and make your own hotels and, like, run them like a business. And this is both of those things. This is a boat that is a hotel that I can pretend work like a business. Obviously in The Sims 4 it doesn't function. It's not real. It doesn't work like that in this game. It's gonna take some imagination for this to be functional and I'll explain sort of how it functions in a bit. But yeah, the real reason that I wanted to build this is just because I love The Sims 3 so much and I really, really badly want hotels in The Sims 4. I've been talking about it a lot recently. I think ever since the horse pack came out, I was like, you know what? My next big dream is to have a hotel. And I've always thought this. I've always wanted hotels. It's been like my number one pack request for a long time. And before you make any assumptions, okay? I am not hinting about a future Sims pack. I don't have the ability to do that. They don't tell me things like that. And even if they did tell me something like that, oh, Careful! My kitten just tried to jump on the curtains. But even if they did tell me future Sims packs, why on earth would I come on here and be like, oh my god, guys, wouldn't it be so cool if we got a horse pack? And like pretended that I didn't know, but I actually did know deep down and then like made a bunch of videos about what if the horse pack had this, this, and this feature? And then it somehow ends up actually having those features because I knew the whole time and I was pretending. Like, why, why would I do that? If they actually told me a thing, why, why would I immediately turn around and make a YouTube video pretending that I'm guessing it? Like, if I did that, they would never tell me anything ever again or like ever work with me ever again. To be honest, they could probably sue me if I did that because I signed an NDA. Like, anyway, I know that most of you know that I, I wouldn't be doing that, but I feel like some people just assume that whenever I talk about a thing that I want in The Sims that I must have some deep secret and I know deep down the truth. Anyway, I know that most of you know that, but I feel like anytime I talk about a thing that I want in The Sims, people assume that I like know some secret and I'm hinting. I'm not. I'm not hinting. I just want hotels. It's, it's just a thing that I would like to see in The Sims 4. There's not like some deep secret, okay? So with that out of the way, let's talk about how this functions because obviously it doesn't really work the way that we sort of expect it to. I've built this lot with the assumption that I'm going to pretend it's a hotel. There is obviously no hotels. So what does pretending it's a hotel mean? It means that you have to bring your Sims here and just never leave. <laughs> like if you wanted to pretend that you were spending the night, you would just bring your Sims here, use the amenities, sleep, and then go home. Because you can't sleep on community lots. It's totally fine to do that. There are some minor inconveniences, like you can't lock the doors to keep townies out of your room. It's not really your room, it's just a bed on a community lot. You also don't pay to stay there like you would in real life. So if you wanted to, I guess you could class this as a rental lot, but I have intentionally not made this a vacation rental because my thought process is that I want this to seem like a real life cruise ship. I would rather have it be a community lot and have other townies visiting and using the pool or even like staffing the bar. If you used it like a vacation rental, it would be just you. Like, you would have this entire ship to yourself, which might be fun, but isn't really how I intended it to be used. Because like I said, this place has a bajillion things on it. There are so many amenities. I was really trying to channel those like ginormous Royal Caribbean cruise ships that have like water slides and all these ridiculous things on them. This is obviously a lot smaller than any of those real life cruise ships. Like in real life, those big ones can have like 6,000 passengers or something. This one has like five guest rooms, <laughs> so you can have 10 passengers. But I still tried to have all of those fun things happening on board. So there's literally a bowling alley downstairs. We've got a kid's corner. There's a restaurant. I put a cafe in. I put a theater space with a big movie screen because in real life a lot of these ships have like live entertainment and you know like dancers and singers and so there's a stage for them downstairs and there's also a small stage by the pool if there was like a poolside band. There is a bar next to the pool, there's a bar in the restaurant, like I, I put so much on here. I was really going all out. So that kind of poses a new question of how does it function and like what kind of lot is it? So this can be changed into pretty much any of the community lots ever. Like it has all the lot requirements for I think all 
all of the community lots. I haven't mentioned this yet, but it also has a spa and a gym. So I'm not kidding. You could make it a spa. You could make it a gym. You could make it a rec center. You could make it into a restaurant. You can make it into a cafe. It can be a bar or a lounge. Like it, it can kind of be classed as anything. I decided to upload it to the gallery as a rec center. And rec center is the community lot type that came with growing together. It's kind of like a community center. It's basically like a catch all lot. The rec center is a gym. It's a restaurant. It's a puzzle room. It's a kid's space. It's got an art studio and a music studio. So the rec center kind of has similar vibes to this lot in that the rec center is everything. And I like the rec center because it attracts sims of all ages. So if you come here while it's classed as a rec center, there'll be kids playing downstairs. There'll be old people playing with the games tables. Like there's going to be a lot of different kinds of sims. Whereas if it's just a bar, you might only have adults coming. And then kind of what you have to do, and it's, it's a little bit annoying, but if you wanted to use the restaurant, obviously the restaurant doesn't actually function if it's classed as a rec center. It's just like some dining tables. So if you wanted to use it as a restaurant, you would have to switch the lot type to restaurant and then use it that way or like switch it to cafe and then use it that way. You just can't really do all the things at once in The Sims 4. It doesn't really work like that. So hopefully that makes sense. That's kind of the explanation of the vision of what I was trying to achieve. You can see while I've been talking, we've made quite a bit of progress on the shape of this building. And I think the shape was by far the hardest part for me to figure out because when you try to make something like a boat in The Sims 4 where everything is a square, it's a little bit difficult. I think that in the end, honestly, I achieved something pretty decent, but it's obviously not really a boat. Like it's, it's just a big giant rectangle at the end of the day. But I did a lot of things like trying to add in big windowed rooms that look like the atriums I've seen on these Royal Caribbean cruise ships. We've got this really cool pool that's like an infinity pool hanging over the edge. There's walls of balconies across the front and back. We've got like some little porthole windows down on the bottom. Now I must warn you, the front and the back of this ship are not the same. I guess, well, left and right. It's kind of confusing because the front of the ship is like the side really. <laughs> when I say front, I mean like the front that's facing the, the beach, right? But they're not even on both sides. There was a lot of discussion about this when I was streaming because I did build this on my Twitch channel and we were taking this so seriously. Like we were really, really going deep with this when we probably didn't need to. Everybody was like, oh my God, it's lopsided. Like it's gonna sink. And meanwhile, it's a Sims build. It doesn't move. It's just a big giant rectangle. But actually in my extensive cruise research, because I was looking up so many cruise videos and photos when I was trying to build this, in my extensive cruise research, I discovered there is a ship that has this kind of thing. Like one side is different and the side is like a bar that moves up and down. So it's like a whole room that can be raised and lowered across the whole top of the ship. And it's only on one side of it. The thing is so big. I don't think you need to worry about it being kind of topsy-turvy. <laughs> I think that you can't feel it like the difference really. But what do I know about cruise ships? Okay, I don't know about the mechanics of how these things work. All I know is I wanted to put a bowling alley in my boat and so I did. <laughs> there was discussion about the bowling alley thing too because people were like, how are you gonna put a bowling alley on a boat that moves? And to that I respond, that's a good question. But in my research, I learned that there are cruise lines that have bowling alleys on them. So there you go. A lot of times because the ship is so big, you can't really feel that it's moving. So I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. And they have all kinds of things on cruise ships now. They've got ice rinks. They've got like diving pools for stages. I don't know how they do this. Honestly, it's very confusing to me, but cruise ships have a lot of stuff. And so I tried to emulate that. Back to the realism thing though, for a second. So we had to make some unfortunate decisions when we were trying to build this, because obviously in real life, you know, let's talk about the obvious. You need to have lifeboats. Okay. You need to have lifeboats because things happen. <laughs> this ship unfortunately looks a lot like the Titanic. It was not, it was not my intention. Okay. I was not trying to build the Titanic. It does look kind of like the Titanic. That wasn't the plan. And this ship unfortunately has no lifeboats. Okay. I know it sounds really bad. We did try though. I tried so hard. I was looking at all kinds of different alternatives. There's like little boat figurines in the game that I was trying to size up. They all just looked weird. They didn't fit. It, the sizing was strange. Like I just, the, the lifeboats didn't fit on the boat. So I just didn't put them. Um, and luckily the boat doesn't move. So your Sims won't need them. The boat is permanently docked. If something happens, you can just go onto the beach. <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, there's no, there's no lifeboats. So that was definitely a big topic of discussion on my Twitch stream because <laughs> we were all laughing about how we, you know, built the Titanic by accident. It wasn't intentional. I swear. This also looks kind of like a Disney cruise ship. When I paint it, you'll see what I mean. Cause it's got like the blue and yellow color scheme. That also was not intentional. I hate Mickey Mouse. I'm actually honestly deep down kind of scared of Mickey Mouse. I would never build a 
the boat to honor him. I know what it looks like, but that was that was also not my intention. Okay, and then the one other thing that I should probably address now as we're just starting to lay things out because this part's kind of slow. I'm just trying to figure out where stuff goes. The other realism thing that we don't really have is like crew quarters. Because on a ship like this, in my research, I have learned that sometimes they'll have like four to 6,000 passengers and then like 2,300 crew members. They have huge capacities on these ships. And I didn't really put any crew space in here because I had kind of limited space. This build is actually as big as I physically can make it because I can't have any more levels to this. It can't be more than four levels tall on The Sims. It just won't let me build up there. So I couldn't make like a five-story ship. It's not possible. And you also can't have a basement on this lot because it's in the water. It won't let you build basements in Sulani. And that makes sense. I mean, I get it. You can't put a basement in the middle of the ocean. We can't have basements in Florida for the same reason. And I'm in Orlando. I'm not even close to the ocean. But basically, I, I kind of capped the amount of space that I could have. I went to like the complete ends of the lot. I didn't have any extra room. And so I wanted to use all of the room that was visible to be like functional for your sims and not so much functional for the story. Because realistically in the game, there is no crew, okay? Like we can pretend all we want, but there is no crew. When you come here, there's not going to be anyone doing the massage tables. They're not going to work at the cafe. They're not even going to be at the bar. You're going to have to hire a vendor. So I don't really need to have a crew quarter section because there is no crew. And so instead I prioritize trying to have things like a gym and a spa and extra stuff for you to use as the player when you come here. So my thought process is that the crew quarters, we're imagining them, okay? The crew is down in the bottom of the ship. So in this, you can kind of see like the black base of the ship. Obviously it's a foundation in The Sims, but we can pretend that there's more rooms down there, windowless, which happens in real life. And that's where all the crew stuff is and the mechanic stuff, all those things for the boat to actually work, it's down there. And we just can't see it because it's down there. That's all. And one last thing, one last thing that we should probably address is that obviously cruise ships are really bad for the environment. Um, this kind of thing is ridiculous that it exists, but this is The Sims 4 and it's pretend. It's, it's actually just a big stationary box. So we don't need to worry about that part. <laughs> we don't even need to think about that part because it's just a big Sims box. But with that, we're kind of done with the main shell of the ship. It took me a really long time to get the shell finished. I I think that's pretty normal for me with these big builds though. Like half the battle is just trying to figure out what we're making and what it's gonna look like. And then the layout, the floor plan was probably the hardest part because we had this weird shell of a boat and I had to try and figure out what rooms I wanted to have and also where they would go. So downstairs in the base level, you can see I'm starting to work on the bowling alley now. This bowling alley is right in the middle of the downstairs and there's kind of like a walkway all the way around it. There's also a theater on this base level. There's like a lobby help desk on this base level level and there's also a bathroom and a kids section. So there's a ton of stuff down here. I don't know why the bowling alley is what I did first. Like I'm not really sure why that's what inspired me so much, but the idea of something so silly like a bowling alley really excited me. So I started there. I think one of the fun parts about doing a giant build like this, especially when it's inspired by a cruise ship, is just how different you can make all of the interior. Because I built that ski lodge and that was like pretty much all just wood. Wood everywhere. It all kind of looked the same. But on these cruise ships, they do some really funky things. They have like funky artwork. They've got some cool wall coloring. Like they do a lot more interesting stuff on cruise ships a lot of the time. So we could kind of have all these different spaces that were very unique from each other. So yeah, I kind of went all out in this bowling alley. We have this like really funky color scheme with these purple lights and this fancy carpet flooring and there's two bowling lanes. Yeah, this is kind of a highlight for me. I don't really ever build or play with bowling in The Sims. It's just kind of weird because the bowling alley things are so big. Like I don't really use them that often. So this was kind of the perfect chance to put them in. And there's so much stuff that works so well with it. Like I used the decor to the max kit flooring and we got all these fun lights. It even has its own bathroom that's like glowing inside. I don't know. I really, really loved this. I feel like the bowling alley kind of sets the tone for everything else in the whole build. So the bowling will function no matter what. You can use this no matter what. I don't know if too many Sims will use it autonomously unless you like have them bowl with you. The way that bowling alleys work in The Sims 4 is kind of weird because they don't have their own lot type. They just work on bars. So if you put a bowling alley on a bar lot, Sims will bowl. But I don't know if they'll bowl here autonomously. There's so much to do on this lot that it's kind of hard because they, their like attention is spread very thin. But if you're looking for something for yourself to do, well, this is definitely a good option. We're moving into the stage area now, the theater, if you will. And this is sort of like a traditional cruise ship thing. Like even old cruise ships, everybody always had a theater because back in the day, we didn't have exciting things like bowling 
bowling alleys on boats. <laughs> but a lot of times these fancy ships would have some sort of entertainment. And so I wanted to have a theater downstairs and I wanted it to be kind of a main feature. Obviously there's not like stage productions in The Sims 4. We can't really do that. So there's some pretending happening here. And in this stage, I didn't even put like instruments. I just put the movie screen because the movie hangout pack does have a big movie screen. And so I put it there in front of like some tiered seating and they're like these big leather recliner type seats. I don't know, they look kind of like stage seats to me. So I used those in this movie room and then I kind of had a hard time figuring out how to best lay it out because I originally had the seats on the two sides and like a walkway down the middle, but it made no sense. So I swapped it out and I had the walkway down the sides and the seats all the way across the middle. It's just kind of tight, like it's a one tile walkway. So it's a little bit harder for your Sims to get through. But to be honest, I don't even know if you can watch the TV screen in here. Like this, this might just be for decoration if I'm being completely real with you, which sounds bad, but here's the thing. This build, it's not functional. Like, I mean, it is, it is functional, but like this is not a realistic thing for you to use. <laughs> There's just so much going on. Like it's not gonna work properly across all of it. It just won't. And what I mean by that is like, there's so much to do that all the things aren't gonna be staffed. The Sims are gonna be kind of confused. Like it just, <sighs> you can't really do this in The Sims 4. Anyway, whenever I do these big speed builds, it's always kind of a chance for like a little life update podcast chit chat with us. <laughs> so here's my life update for you. You won't believe this, but my sewer cats are actually in this room right now. One of them is sleeping next to me. The other one is sleeping on my desk and they're being silent and calm. I have these kittens that I found in a sewer a few weeks ago. Well, at this point, it's been a couple months. The babies are about 16 weeks old. I've kept two of them and my sister and my parents kept the other baby and the mom. So we've got all the cats. All the cats are still here. And the kittens are obsessed with my office. I think it's partially because they love going up and down stairs so much. And I don't let them go into the stair landing unsupervised. I always close the door to it because I'm just nervous. The stair landing, it has like some open railings that are kind of high and I'm nervous that they're gonna walk through it and fall because one of my friends, their cat fell through kind of a situation like that and broke their leg as a kitten. And so now I'm like so paranoid about my kittens hurting themselves. So basically they're not allowed to go upstairs unless they are supervised, which of course makes them want to go upstairs even more. <laughs> and so they love being up here and when they do come up here, they're usually running, like chasing each other around, wrestling, running across everything. But they finished their running already today. They spent like an hour and a half running and now they're sleeping. So you can't even tell it's peaceful. It's quiet. <laughs> There's no kitten footsteps everywhere. So they're, they're kind of hanging out with me right now. I've been trying to keep you all updated on the introduction process between the kittens and my cat because I have a I'm sorry to be rude, but I have a grouchy old lady cat. <laughs> and I'm just, that's how she's been behaving. So I'm just being honest. But she's 15 and doesn't like babies. So it's very normal. <laughs> a lot of times cats are very territorial and they don't like being introduced to new cats. I hear that girl cats especially have harder times sometimes. So it's sort of been a process, this introduction. It's been like a month now that we've been working on this. It started off with like very slow scent swapping. So like we would trade towels or blankets that had the other cat scents on them. And then we would take the kittens out and let Snap go into their room so she could sniff around. And what she actually did was hiss at everything. She would like hiss at their chair and hiss at their food bowl. So it's a whole thing. Slow process, right? So we start off with the scent swapping. We're also like feeding them on opposite sides of the same door. So they associate the scent with positive things like food. And then we start letting them see each other and feed them at the same time, just from a distance. And now we have graduated slowly to them being allowed together in the room. Like we are near each other all the time. Only supervised though. I don't let the kittens just be out unsupervised still because I'm trying to keep the kittens out of my bedroom because that snaps like safe space. I'm not letting the kittens invade her safe space yet. But the update is that obviously Snap is still hissing at them. That's a given. She's a bit grouchy, but she's been hissing a lot less. So like she'll get a little bit upset if they get too close to her, but if they're just around existing in the same space and not like approaching her, she's fine. Yesterday, Shrimp and Snap were sleeping on the couch together at the same time, which is a massive improvement. That's a first. We haven't done that yet. Usually if the kittens come near, she'll leave, but Snap was sitting on my lap and then Shrimp came up and started sleeping on the blanket and she just let him do it. So we're really getting somewhere. We're, we're making some massive progress. She still doesn't like them that much. <laughs> She's still working on it. It's kind of funny to see the differences because Shrimp, he's the boy and I also have Sunny. Sunny is scared of her. She does not like Snap very much, which makes sense because Snap keeps hissing at her. Sunny kind of keeps her distance a little bit more, but Shrimp really, really wants to be around Snap. Like he stares at her constantly. If Snap is out, Shrimp is watching her. He also really tries to get near her and she really doesn't want him to. 
So it's just been so cool to see how they behave differently and like how it's working out. So anyway, I'll keep you updated as we hopefully slowly become more and more tolerating <laughs> of each other. But again, this is super normal. It's not like Snap is being like some evil nightmare cat. She's not like aggressive. She just doesn't want to be around them that much. And that is so normal with cats. So normal with cats, especially because she's kind of old and their babies like it's just very reasonable. It's very much what I expected. It's still just kind of hard because I feel like I'm ruining her life a little bit. So that's what's been going on in my life. <laughs> just slow cat introductions. But anyway, we have moved on from the outside now. I finished like the whole dock area you might have seen and we've moved upstairs to the deck <laughs> instead. And we're working on the pool deck space. So by the pool deck, we obviously have the big pool. I also put in some lounge chairs and then I've got this covered area and I wanted to have a really fun little pool bar underneath the covered area. And I've been trying to go for like theming everywhere with this build. We have like the really funky retro themed bowling alley. And then the pool bar, I was kind of trying to make a little bit more beachy themed. So I used some of the Island Living stuff because there's like a surfboard theme almost to the Island Living stuff. I put a crab wall menu. We've got like some fishing decor from cats and dogs. And I put some lights and things like that to try and have that beach side sort of vibe happening. I also put a little mini stage by this pool bar because I liked the idea of pretending there was live music up here. I could see that happening on a real cruise ship, like maybe having some live performances or something. I guess if you wanted to, um, the, the other Sims wouldn't really perform there, but you could. You could have your Sims perform there in practice. <laughs> and I put a dance floor, so you've got things for your Sims to do there too. This is kind of cute. Like if you wanted to use this just as a bar and sort of ignore all the rest of it, the rooftop of this building is kind of fun to bring your Sims to. Watching this, I'm just like thinking back to how I felt when I was building it. And I felt like I had so much left to do. I was like so overwhelmed as I was building this because it's just such a big build. Like we've barely scratched the surface at this point with the furnishing. And what's funny is we're halfway through this feed build. So most of the build was just the exterior, which makes sense. It took a long time to figure out. And I will say I did cut out some things from the speed build because it just took so long to do. So a lot of stuff like the hallways, I just cut that out and I'll show you the hallways when we do a tour at the end of the video. There's just some things that there's not enough time. This video is gonna be like an hour and a half long sped up <laughs> and there's only so much talking that I can do. I know I can talk, I can really talk, but I just felt like it was, it was too long. An hour and a half is too long. <laughs> Quick shout out to my friend Hope who does the closed captions on my YouTube videos. Uh, Hope, I'm really sorry about this. <laughs> like really sorry, this is long enough already. Anyway, we're moving inside now. We're actually gonna start working on the state rooms, like the hotel room part of this build. And I really loved doing the hotel room. This to me was like the most realistic, coolest aspect of this whole building. There's five regular size, like kind of small hotel rooms here. And there's also one bigger suite that has its own balcony that's like got a really big space for a hot tub and stuff. But these five smaller suites are all completely identical to each other. And I was really trying to channel real life hotel rooms and real life cruise ships with this because on a ship, obviously these rooms are gonna be quite small and pretty compact. So what we've got is like a little walkway. When you first come into the hallway, there's like a wall of closet space. In those closets, you could hang up your clothes. There's probably some life jackets in there. And then we have a bed and I put next to the bed, a little couch that I kind of am pretending is a sleeper sofa. It's obviously not actually a sleeper sofa because we do have the Murphy beds in The Sims 4, but they didn't match. The color scheme didn't work, so I didn't use them. And then across from the bed, there's some more cabinets, there's a TV, and then we also have a little built-in desk area. So I tried to make it look like everything in this room was all built in. We don't want furniture sliding around, okay? And I think in real life, that kind of thing happens in a lot of hotel rooms. They have like big, long furniture pieces. The headboard is like attached to the desk and stuff like that. And also, from my understanding, I think when they build these ships in real life, they build these hotel room things in like a container outside of the ship, and then they just insert the whole thing into it, which is kind of an interesting little tidbit. <laughs> so I guess I was channeling that a little bit too. So again, with this build and with any build, it does take a tiny bit of imagination. We have to pretend it's a sleeper sofa. We have to pretend that those cabinets are, you know, functional storage. And then also in the bathroom, honestly, the bathroom is pretty nice for a cruise ship because a lot of times in real life, those cruise ship bathrooms are really, really, really small. Like honestly, probably more like a two by two sort of vibe in The Sims than a three by two, but we had space for a bigger one. So I put it in a three by two space. I think I also put a bathtub 
in these cruise ship bathrooms, which I don't really think is that realistic, <laughs> but it's nice. I guess it's nice to have. Again, in my extensive research of cruise ships, I did learn a few things about cruise ship bathrooms and all of the ships sort of do it differently depending on the cruise line. But something I learned is that in a lot of the Disney cruise ships, I guess because they're more targeted towards families, it makes sense. In a lot of the Disney cruise ships, they'll have two bathrooms. Again, very small, like closet sized, tiny, 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 can barely stand up in them, but they'll have two. One's got a toilet and a sink and the other one has a shower in a tub because that way you can use it more easily with more than one person. So it's kind of like this exact same size still, just there's a door into both halves of it because then it's closed off and more easy for more than one person to use. And sometimes, sometimes those Disney cruise ships actually do have tubs. I don't know if it's all the rooms or if it's just like on the newer ones. I was looking at a lot of pictures, so I'm not really sure. I've never been on a Disney cruise, so I don't know, <laughs> but I, um, I was intrigued by that. I thought that was kind of nice. I bet that's good if you've got kids. I bet that helps a lot, especially because you're sharing this tiny space. Like sometimes on these cruise ships, this room could potentially sleep like five or six because they might have the bed, the pullout sofa. And sometimes these cruise ship rooms will also have bunk beds that can lower from the ceiling. So it's like a bed that can fold down and then they have like a ladder in the closet they can put up and attach to it. So sometimes you can have like <laughs> four double beds and then one like bunk bed from the ceiling. So we can't do that in the Sims, but could you imagine being in one of those tiny little closet rooms with six people? No, 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 no. That's not for me. Not for me. <laughs> At least the ship has a lot of stuff to do. There's lots of places to go and get away from the room. And also it's the Sims. <laughs> so it's not real <laughs> and you don't need to worry about it. One other thing that was kind of interesting and discussed a lot in my streams while I was building this was like the situation with the rooms because a lot of people were like, you put a kid's space and you didn't put any kid's beds. But here's my thought process on this, okay? In real life, obviously kids can sleep in any hotel room bed. Like a kid can sleep in any bed. If you go to a regular hotel room that's got two queen beds, the kids can sleep in there, that's fine. And if you need like a crib or an extra cot, you can ask the hotel and they can bring one to you and set it up. It doesn't just come like pre-stocked in here. So kind of my thought on that was like, if you really wanted to have a crib for your sim, I don't know why you'd bring an infant in, in the Sims 4 to this place, but if you wanted to, you can just go into build mode and switch it out and add it. Like it's totally fine. I personally would not ever bring an infant here because <laughs> I would never want to do that. Okay, anyway, I do have one space on this ship that is for the crew and that is uh, the captain's <laughs> Helm. I made this like control center for the captain. I found this little gnome that has like a wheel in front of him and then I got the wheel from cats and dogs and I put him there with his wheel and the big wheel and then I put these like control desks down too and had some gnomes working at those and there's like some screens and some tech stuff because realistically this ship would be like all tech to, to power it but I wanted to use the, the traditional wheel because it made me laugh. <laughs> so this room is kind of just a joke this like little captain's area is kind of a, a meme, but I thought it was really funny. So I put it in there. It also has these like, they're like target maps on the wall. It's like almost as if it's like some sort of scary control center and we're planning an attack or something. But uh, maybe they're just the cruise ports. We can just pretend that it's the cruise ports and there's nothing nefarious happening. Okay, don't worry about it. I even put like a double door to get into it. Cause I was trying to keep it a little bit secret. <laughs> it's so dumb. And then this room, this room next door to it is the cafe. So we're kind of starting to get into more of the public space. We've got a cafe in this area. It has a bathroom upstairs too to make it a little bit easier for you. And this is one of those things that unfortunately is not really gonna function right. Like if you wanna use it as a cafe, I think that you can hire staff so you can click on it and like hire a vendor, but you have to pay for that. It doesn't just like automatically staff unless you've got a class as a cafe lot type. I know I keep saying this, but it's really just a limitation of The Sims 4. There's only so much you can do because this place functions as like 10 different community lots all at once. And obviously The Sims doesn't work like that. Like you can't really do that. So it stinks, but at least it looks cool. Half of this build is just it looking cool. It's not even really meant for gameplay. It's more just for fun because it's so fun to build and to look at. Not everything needs to make perfect sense and, and work completely perfectly, okay? Sometimes we can just do silly things for fun. Oh, and speaking of things that are limitations in The Sims 4, this build is kind of laggy, I must warn you, because it's so big. But the other problem is that because there's a lot of round pieces, when I was trying to paint the walls and like move some things and also do the ceiling paint, I almost rage quit while trying to do ceiling paint because the round spots were so weird and broken that I had to stop. <laughs> 
<laughs> the ceiling paint was too much for me. This kind of thing happens in big builds. You kind of reach a point where it's like, oh my God, I can't do this. And when the ceiling paint wasn't working right, that was my, oh my God, I can't do this moment. It was really, really, really testing me. The round walls look so good from the outside. They look so cool, but oh my God, round walls are so annoying in The Sims 4. They're so bad. Any other time I wouldn't have used them. But in this case, we kind of, we kind of needed them. They were like perfect for it. The boat had to have some round parts, even if it was painful. This is kind of a stretch, okay, but I do have one other life update for you that is sort of similar to this hotel vibe that we're talking about. I'm going to be at a hotel soon because I'm going to TwitchCon. TwitchCon's it like late-ish October in Vegas. So if any of you have plans to be at TwitchCon, I will be there. This is like the fifth time I've gone to TwitchCon or something. I've been, well, I went in 2017, 18, and 19, and then last year. Oh, and I went to one in Berlin too. Oh, this is going to be my sixth TwitchCon. That's so weird. And at TwitchCon, I'm doing a panel about charity streaming and also a meet and greet. So if either of those two things interest you, I thought I would just mention it in case you didn't know because I am going to be there. Last year, my meet and greet, I gave out stickers. So that that's nice. I'm not trying to like convince you to buy a ticket and go, by the way. It's more just I'm mentioning it in case you were already going to be there. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you were aware. TwitchCon's kind of expensive. And to be honest, I think the TwitchCon is a little bit more fun for a streamer than for a Twitch viewer. A lot of these conventions are. I don't know what it's gonna be like this time because it's in Vegas for the first time. I'm kind of nervous about it because I got used to it being in San Diego. <laughs> I have been a couple times to that one and now they've moved it. So it's gonna be different and weird. Conventions just kind of give me a lot of anxiety, I think. <laughs> that makes sense though, because everything gives me anxiety. So it's not really that weird, but anyway, I can do it. I'll be brave, I'll be fine. I went to VidCon this year and I did a panel and at the panel, a guy in a shark costume jumped on stage and then threatened to expose himself. So if I can do that, I can do it anything. I am not joking, by the way, that is actually a thing that happened at VidCon. This guy in a shark costume walked up, climbed the fence, climbed on stage, got on stage and started yelling at us and like making these weird comments. And then he started doing the worm before he got picked up by Dream's private security and carried off stage. You can't make this up. I think Dream is the missing link here. <laughs> Dream is like a really giant Minecraft YouTuber um, and he was also on the panel. So I think that's why this happened because it was like the panel that Dream was on. So the shark guy was just trying to get attention, I think. But Dream's private security is who stopped him, not even VidCon security, Dream's private security guard, which now makes sense that he has one because this probably happens a lot. And it's kind of funny now, like talking about it and looking back on it, but at the time it really scared me, like really, really, really scared me because I didn't know what he was going to do. Like this person is approaching the stage and yelling at us and we can't really hear him because it was so loud in there. So was he making a threat? Like I just, I didn't know what his intentions were and it freaked me out. But thankfully it was just like an attention thing. He was doing the worm. There was no violence. It was just the worm. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of sharks, actually, I'm making like a little under the sea themed kids playroom. So in this playroom, I've got like a little soft section with some stuff for toddlers. We've got a reading nook. There's a ball pit. I even put a little science corner with like the science tables and like some school project decor. There's some art tables. So there's basically anything that your Sims kids could want. Even a game table is down here. There's a ton of stuff for the kids to do, which hopefully helps because this lot honestly has a lot of kids things. There's the bowling alley too and the pool. I really, really try tried hard to have fun stuff for like all ages on this build, except for infants. I did not try hard for infants. I don't, I don't think that you should bring infants here. In my opinion with The Sims 4, I wouldn't bring infants anywhere. And I mean that. I I would just leave them at home. <laughs> and that sounds bad, but they're just annoying. They're annoying and they'll, they'll be fine at home. So this is all more like toddler and up <laughs> in, the, in the building. But that's okay. I love infants. They're super cute, but it's just not worth dealing with. God, speaking of infants, the kittens are waking up. One of them has stood up and she's walking behind my monitor. Hi, Sunny. Do you want to come see the stream? I mean... <laughs> I mean, the YouTube video, sorry. Despite all my best efforts, I have still yet to get them to care about The Sims. I've been trying so hard to get them to care about The Sims. See, she doesn't want to see it. I thought you would like it, it's a boat. But I keep I keep trying to show on my screen to see if they want to watch it and nothing has worked yet. My friend told me that her cat likes to watch the horses and I haven't shown them the horses yet. So it's possible the horses could be a hit, but they didn't care about cats and dogs. They didn't care about any of it. They do sometimes watch the TV, but not like for prolonged periods. I haven't tried to show them any cat TV or anything because they make those videos that are just like squirrels and birds and stuff, but I haven't shown them that. It's interesting because Snap, my other cat, the one that I've had for a lot longer and is a lot older, she did not care about screens 
ever, like in her entire life, until like four or five years ago when Planet Zoo first came out. I was playing Planet Zoo and like the intro to that game is an animal running across the screen and she was sitting on my desk just looking at me and then she heard the elephant, turned around, saw it running and immediately was fascinated. So she watched the thing run across the screen and then just stared while I played Planet Zoo the entire time. And now she cares more about screens in general. Like she'll watch me play Sims. She likes to sit here on my desk and watch the little Sim move across the screen, but the kittens don't care yet. I'd love to know in the comments, how many of your cats are interested in the Sims? Do they have a favorite game to watch you play? Is it the Sims? Is it something else? Do I even want the kittens to want to watch my screen? Like, would that be a good or bad thing? They haven't really been that annoying on my keyboard yet. They mostly like to sit behind my monitor, like kind of in the corner, which is fine. I have a little basket on my desk and one of them always sits in the basket, which is really cute, but they haven't really bothered my keyboard yet, which I appreciate. Cause Snap likes to lay here in front of me, half on the keyboard, which is really nice of her, but is slightly more inconvenient. Anyway, we are furnishing the restaurant now. I'm going through and trying to decorate the restaurant. So in this room, I was trying to have like fancy main dining room on the cruise ship vibes because there's a few more casual places to get food. I sort of think of the upstairs cafe as like a casual spot for food. You can probably buy food at the bar. And this is supposed to be like the fancy dining room, the more formal dining room. I put a bunch of tables. We have like some little bar space as well. And there's a kitchen off of it. There was a lot of discussion about this and whether or not we should use tables that have tablecloths or if we should just use these tables. And I really tried the tablecloth tables. I just didn't like how they looked. I really, really did not like the tablecloth paired with those chairs or with any chair. I think the tablecloths in The Sims 4 look kind of weird. There's like something off about the texture. Or I don't know, maybe it's just the way that it sits. It's not very realistic. So I, I didn't like the tablecloths. I couldn't bring myself to use them, but I did put regular tables. And there's also some tables outside. So on the patio and this big balcony in front of the restaurant, there's more seating. That was one other kind of, oh my God, they just, they're playing with a box. <laughs> I spoke too soon. This is how you can tell how long this video is because they've gone from being sleeping peacefully to in their running mode again. But anyway, <laughs> the other realistic thing about the outside is that there's some tables with umbrellas and we were kind of joking about how the umbrellas, obviously in real life, you probably don't want umbrellas in the front of a boat. Like they're gonna fly away. But just imagine that they take the umbrellas down and put them back up when, when they're like sailing and docked and stuff. And luckily in The Sims 4, they're never sailing. They're only docked. <laughs> This boat never moves. So we can get away with a few unrealistic things like this. We are almost done, by the way. There's like three minutes left of the speed build. So we're getting there. <laughs> we are getting there. And obviously at the end, I'll give you a quick tour to show you what everything looks like. Cause when you speed around like this, there's just too much to see. You can't really keep track of everything. The last thing that we haven't really gotten to yet is actually the spa. So there is a spa on this building because of course there is, there's everything on this building. And in the spa, it basically takes up an entire floor. The, the floor is dedicated to the spa, the captain's area, the cafe, and then also the fancy private suite. And in that spa, I managed to get a lot of cool stuff. I've got like one sauna, there's some massage tables. I even have a nail salon area. Cause when I was looking it up, it looks like a lot of times in real life on these cruise ships, they'll even have hair salons sometimes and you can like get your hair done and stuff. Everything about this seems so expensive to me. Like so, so, so expensive to me. I can't imagine doing that on a boat cause it's probably like way pricier than doing it on land, right? I mean, I don't know. I haven't really looked it up, but <laughs> I'm assuming. But a lot of times these cruise ships have fancy spas, obviously. So I wanted to make sure we added one of those in. There's even like some pretty water features. Like I really, really feel like it turned out quite well. One of the other things that I did that I thought was kind of weird, and maybe I'm overthinking this, but I used a lot of different doors, okay? Like kind of strange doors. And normally in my builds, I try to use the same doors everywhere because I want it to be kind of uniform. But in this, I used some kind of funky doors. Like there was that weird hexagon door downstairs into the bowling alley. And then we have this kind of spa logo door. And I did that on purpose because like I was saying earlier, I feel like on these boats, we can get away with some different vibes of things. Like it's okay if we have sort of unique styles in each room. So I, I did it intentionally, but it is kind of strange. And also of course, there's a lot of hallways in here. So I put just a bunch of random furniture, like seating areas in the hallways to fill it all up. I did cut that out, like I said, so you don't have to watch me put the same chair everywhere, but there's hallways everywhere on this boat. The hallway thing actually is something that I kind of struggled with because a lot of times on these boats, they'll have a deck that goes all the way around the building and you can walk like around all of it, if not most of it. But I never did that here because we just couldn't really get it to fit. And then the back didn't have space for a full promenade deck. So I kind of just didn't do it. It almost fakes it a little bit with the balconies in the front, but it, yeah, we didn't have one of those. We also don't have a buffet and that's probably the most glaring unrealistic feature of this boat.
though is that there is no buffet. Welcome to The Sims 4, where we don't have buffets. <laughs> we have those little buffet tables, but it doesn't really count. So we didn't have anything like that. We just have the real sit down restaurant. But in real life, there would almost certainly be a real buffet on this cruise ship. But that, my friends, that is everything. That is the entire build finished. We're just putting on some last minute touches. I'm kind of decorating the rest of the spa and thinking about the hallway and all this stuff and what we can add in. I feel like the place is very tranquil and very serene on the inside. I'm genuinely like really, really quite proud of this build. I feel like it looks so good. And I'm glad that I think it looks good because I spent so long on this. This is definitely the biggest and longest build I've ever done in my entire life, but it was worth it. It was fun. If you'd like, I'm actually gonna link a playlist of the cruise ship streams down below. Obviously it took like 12 hours, but if you wanted to watch that, I can link it for you. And now we are going to jump back into the game for real and give you a quick tour of the finished building. We have a lot to show off on this thing because it is huge. Hi, it's the next day. I actually had a meeting right after I stopped recording the last part and then I didn't have time to do the tour. And then I went to bed and kind of forgot about it. So we are back and I'm going to show you around the cruise ship. There's also a kitten walking back and forth behind my monitor. So if the camera moves, just ignore it. So I built this on that giant empty lot in Sulani. It's called Sapphire Shores. It is 50 by 50. And on the gallery, this is very creatively named cruise ship. So hopefully it won't be too hard for you to find. It also uses like all of the packs. I'm so sorry. This is really, really bad. And it costs almost 500,000 simoleons. It's 472,867. This is probably going to take me a second to place. So hopefully we can get this to work. Okay. So here is the finished product. I'm not going to lie. I'm really proud of this. I'll start off by showing you around the outside a little bit. So in the front, I tried to make a pretend dock basically for the ship to be parked at. There was a lot of discussion in my stream about whether or not we should have a parking lot and if there should be like a cruise terminal where you would check in. And we kind of decided against all of that because this is kind of just at a beach. Like there isn't really a way that you could pretend that your Sims drove up here. It doesn't make any sense to have a parking lot. So instead I did put a little kids playground. There's like a little ship playground right in front of the very big ship. And then your Sims can just walk up this and get up here. I tried to make it look like it was a real dock. So there's like some metal and some benches and a trash can, stuff like that. And this is the full exterior of the ship. If you look around the whole thing, it looks kind of like this. So to start our tour, I will bring you straight inside to the little front desk area. Obviously in a real cruise ship, you'd probably check in in like a terminal that it's docked at and you'd like get all your paperwork, go through security. I didn't put that sort of thing. This is the front desk. It's kind of more hotel lobby-esque and it's also almost like a help desk for the ship we could pretend. Nothing too fancy when you first walk in, but there is a bathroom downstairs. So there's an easy access bathroom for you right here. If you come around this way, there's just a big long hallway that goes all the way to the back of the ship. And this is where that theater that we talked about is. So your Sims can sit in these chairs and watch the movie screen if you would like to. There's also TVs in all the rooms, but if for some reason you wanted to use the theater, then you could. I even put like some little movie posters out front. I centered the cow plant one because that was the best one. Downstairs, I also managed to put this little photo booth. I was trying to think of different things that could be like woohoo spots or functional for gameplay. So you could take some photos in there if you wanted to. It's kind of weirdly placed and I tried to put curtains to cover up the fact that like there's a window right there because it looked sort of weird. But this was sort of a last minute addition. On the left side, we have the kids area and I really like this. I like this little science corner the best, I think, because I have the science tables. I put all these little school project things lined up because they're kind of cute decor. We even have like some wall decals. There's some bookshelves. I managed to use the boat wallpaper because you have to for the boat build. We do have a ball pit. There's a game table. There's some art and music stuff. There's some little kids stuff. I even got the toddler slide, but like the whale version and surrounded it with some fish things. So you can kind of see where all the packs are coming in here. Cause I use like the bathroom kit and like I've, I used every pack, every pack. In the middle of the downstairs is the bowling alley. And this part is so cool. Look at the roof. I put like this kind of fun galaxy ceiling in there. So the lighting in this room is pretty fun. It's got some bowling decor. I feel like this stuff, these bubble lights almost look like grapes kind of going all the way across the room, but it was cute. There's just kind of some fun and funky lighting in here. And I got to use some stuff that I never do. Like, I don't know if I've ever used this door because I kind of think it's ugly, but it almost works for this purpose. And then you go upstairs. It's the second floor now. And this is where the main living quarters are on the ship. When you first come up, we've got some vending machines. I even put like a little speaker there because I was picturing the captain having like announcements for the whole boat. To the right, I put this little cruise library. So in my research, I learned that a lot of ships have libraries on board and they're oftentimes really small. Like this almost is more books than they might have on those. But I did put like some little board game boxes because I was kind of pretending that you could check out stuff from in here to do while you're on board. I also put a chess table and some computers just 
just in case. Around to the left, this is the cafe. So your Sims can get some food and some drinks in here. There's also a bathroom on this floor and like a little storage room. I really like the vibes of this cafe. I think the tables look kind of cool. And that's a good example of the curved stuff being broken. So just ignore that. My favorite part of the whole ship is the captain's area. I kind of mentioned the little captain who has a wheel in front of the bigger wheel, <laughs> but the captain drives the boat from right here. I kind of tried to make it seem almost realistic, but you know, there's only so much realism you can do in The Sims 4 when um, it's a fake boat and there's a gnome driving it. In my mind, the gnomes are the staff though. So we have like a handful of gnomes working in here. There was a gnome down here running the front desk. I always put this guy, whenever I put a building, I'll make like a gym and I'll have Mr. Business running it every single time. He's got all your money right there in his suitcase <laughs> because I imagine it's probably very expensive to come on this cruise ship. But then down this way, this is where all of the rooms start. So we have five of the same room, just copy, paste, copy, paste. And they all have their own balcony, which is pretty nice. This is what the rooms look like. So we kind of have these cool built-in set up. There's like a vanity space. We've got the storage here. There's a nice bathroom. And then, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste all the way down. And at the very end, the opposite end of the ship, we have the gym. So there's a lot of gym equipment in here for your Sims to use. On the back side, it's kind of similar to the front. It's just like one big long balcony instead. And I kind of just put like some seating and some paintings in between all the rooms. I like these doors doors because they look kind of like they actually could be a hotel room door. There's like a map of the floor for evacuation routes and there's like a peephole in the front. And then if we go upstairs again, the staircase takes you directly into the main dining room, which is kind of useful for your Sims if they needed to come in here to eat. There's a bar. It kind of looks like a boat bar too because of the portholes. There is one very small kitchen on board, but I think that's totally fine. You don't need much more space than this. And the staff has their own balcony, which maybe is weird, but kind of works. <laughs> and this is the front like outdoor seating from the restaurant. I like I like how it has the big windows all the way across the whole front. There's also a fish tank because it's kind of like ocean themed. And then in this hallway, we can access the spa. So I kind of picture that you would walk straight in here. You can put your things in a locker. You can shower. There is a toilet. And then you could come and get a massage. You could use the sauna or you could get your nails done in here. These are actually waterfalls. So they look kind of cool in game. And obviously it backs up to the pool. So it actually makes sense that there would be like plumbing there. And all the way down this big hallway, this is the suite. So we do have one big fancy hotel room that's a little bit nicer than all of the others. And this hotel room has three balconies all to itself. It's got one on each side and one in the back of the boat. We have a little bed. There's a dresser. It's got like a little living room space and a desk. It has like a proper entryway even. And then you come over here in this super nice bathroom. There's a corner tub and like a huge shower. So you've got some fancy amenities. And on the balcony, you've got your own private lounge chairs and a private hot tub. So if you were going to bring your Sims here, honestly, I would make my Sims suffer in a small room. But if you wanted to have like a nice vacation, you could use this one and have it all to yourself. Sort of. It's pretend, but you know. And then if we go all the way back, we go upstairs again. I probably should have put two staircases on like either side of the ship, but I didn't. Go upstairs again. This is kind of just like a room around the staircase, but out here we do have two hot tubs on the top floor. There's some loungers in the back. And then around this side, this is the pool and like the big pool deck. So there's a bunch of lounge chairs. In real life on cruise ships, they'll have like a million lounge chairs just packed tightly together. It feels like there isn't even walking space in some of the pictures that I was looking at, but in this one there is walking space. <laughs> so we do have some chairs and some umbrellas. I I put some towels kind of lined up against the doorway too. Oh my God, I noticed an unpainted wall. Don't look at that, shh, don't look at that. And then over here, last but not least, this is like the pool bar area. So we have a cute spot to listen to some music. We've got a bar, we have a dance floor and some seating. There's some tables up here. And that my friends is the entire ship. I tried to add in a lot of little details like this smokestack thing and like the solar panels and the satellite dishes, just little things that I hoped made it look more like a ship to the best of my ability because realistically it's never gonna look like a ship because it is a sims build but i'm pretty proud of it i think it turned out pretty cool it is on the gallery if you want to download it and hopefully you enjoyed this video it took a lot to make this it has been like a many 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 day process so hopefully you enjoyed it i'm gonna link that video that i made about the ski resort down below because it's kind of similar vibes because i guess they're both giant hotel builds even though style wise they are completely different and with that i'm gonna catch you all tomorrow okay bye everybody this is one of the longest Sims videos I've ever posted on YouTube. I mean, not counting my live stream re-uploads, but this is, this is a big one.